Okay, um, my name is Isabel Gassner and I'm working for Eckhart since roughly 20 years as a technical service engineer and I'm responsible for all kind of print applications for customers in Germany, Switzerland and Austria. Yeah, hello and my name is Thorsten Schmelich. Um, I'm in the company since about 17 years doing actually uh, the same but for the mainly for the Asian customers, Asian markets. Yeah, and I've been uh, working on some um, sustainability projects uh, in the last uh, one and a half years. And uh, yeah, today we show you some results and uh, hope you will find it interesting. We are focusing a little bit on the paper industry and the recycling and the inking of paper based on metallic inks, um, which we supply. Yeah, okay. So we we start. Yeah, today we will share, Thorsten said, some information about sustainability aspects of the printing metallics, particular with regard to paper and board printing. Yeah, the prevention of waste is a clear goal of the whole printing industry. Um, we will compare metallic effects of different technologies and how waste can be reduced, reused, replaced, or recycled. Yeah, we will kind of an agenda. We will explain the Eckert strategy to become more sustainable. We will talk also about the paper recycling and the requirements for inks. We will explain um, yeah, briefly coming from the linear to the circular packaging materials and talk about paper recycling. Yeah, Thorsten mentioned already especially about um, yeah, the de-inking process. This is a bit um, yeah, broader explained. The inking trials with um, Ingide method number 11 and our test results will be shown. And finally, we will compare metallic inks versus alternative technologies. Yeah, the picture on the left shows our production facility in Günterstal, not such a yeah, well-known capital, but, but it's in the middle of the nature and conscious of tradition, we are aware of the responsible use of resources. NACAD is focusing on the reduction of carbon dioxide as well as on life cycle analysis and on process efficiency. A strict, a strict process control is implemented in our closed loop production. Our facility works with the state-of-the-art sensor measurement. Waste prevention goes hand in hand with the reuse of distillates and filtration in our pigment paste production. Yeah, these are the well-known sustainable development goals, not only for, for Eckhart, for the whole industry. Eckhart will become climate neutral by 2025. And yeah, <laughs> look at where we started in 2014. We've already taken a very good path forward, I'd say. Uh, from 2019 to 2020, Eckert achieved a reduction up to 40% of the product carbon footprint. We are working on cradle to gate LCA calculations for main product groups and additional sustainability program looks detailed into the whole supply chain, our production, and also for indirect departments. Yeah, the comparison of pigment groups and their carbon footprint values is quite interesting. The results shown here are evaluated from the German Association of Pigments Industry. Inorganic pigments and fillers are in the range of six kilogram carbon dioxide per kilogram of product. Yeah, and the most impact have the organic pigments we calculated with 26 <coughs> kilogram carbon dioxide per kilogram of product. Yeah, well, metal effect pigments have roughly only eight kilogram carbon dioxide per kilogram of products. Yeah, this is, of course, um, an average value. No. Uh, and 
yeah, Thorsten, I will hand over to your part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here you can see there are different uh, streams of waste and recyclables. Uh, different industries and, of course, applications have different material flows and recycling cycles. Here we di distinguish between paper and, and film applications. In this web seminar, we are focusing on the recycling material flow for paper and cardboard. The decisive factor is that printing ink only accounts for a very small portion in the materials to be recycled. Depending on the substrate, uh, this is a few percentage of the total product as a rough indication. We're talking about a approximately one to 5% of the total mass of product. Within these applications, metallic inks only stands for a very small fraction of the total demand for printing ink for the graphic arts industry and packaging industry. On the right side in this um, picture, the this SEM shot, you can see that uh, metallic layers are generally very thin uh, in, in this case, uh, we're talking about uh, an ink layer of one to three micron and uh, part of this, um, the aluminum or gold bronze pigment is maybe only a half micron um, thick layer. Uh, therefore, the total input of the metallic inks into the recyclable material stream is uh, quite small. We are talking about a maximum of yeah, roughly one part per million of uh, metallic pigment components in the whole recycling stream. In the field of metallic inks for graphic application, as well as in the field of carton packaging, especially for indirect food packaging, Eckhart has uh, offers um, and solutions, printing inks that conserve resources and meet requirements of the cycles, especially with regard to the mineral oil-free products for offset printing. Here we have in the past um, developed um, special inks uh, called, um, or we've been sold under the FPG um, label. And what does it stand for? We're talking about a closed cycle in the milling of metallic pigments but also um, a, a closed cycle in the ink production based on these special treated metallic pigments. Without the use of mineral spirits or mineral oils, and this is very important for the uh, recycling process, and nowadays also very important from the regulatory standpoint and, of course, the migration standpoint. The process run highly efficient with uh, new fatty acid free lubricants instead of the traditional lubricants, oleic or stearic acid. And these can be also safely used for low migration applications. The raw materials are stored and processed separately so that cross contamination with non suitable raw materials can be excluded. Only specially trained personal work workers are. Um, yeah, working, operating in this plant unit and under the highest purity and safety standards, which is very important to meet all the um, yeah, regulatory requirements and also the documentation uh, according to GMP. Production is located in a separate part of the plant. Therefore, no raw materials from other areas can, can be contaminating these products. And it also the raw materials are analytically tested for their purity requirements. Yeah, recycling is about the inking mainly, and the inkability of the inks uh, is important to ensure recycling of the paper and paperboards used, so that the whole um, cycle is working well. And um, yeah, here we have a, a rather high. Um, rate of um, recyclability in the European paper streams already. However, there is still further to do, further work, because uh, a lot of the packaging material are not recycled so far because uh, yeah, 
inks had not been specially designed to make them um, suitable for the inking process. But here you can see the, the inks that are added to the process during printing and conversion must be able to be removed from the substrate and the, at the end. And by the way, um, yeah, the so-called the inking material, which is used in this uh, recycling plants, um, has, uh, yeah, uh, can be reused, but um, also the waste of this process, that means uh, particles which are somehow separated in the de-inking um, material can be also further reused uh, um, in, for example, in the construction industry as a kind of filler to even, yeah, um, enhance the quality of the um, either concrete um, or um, other construction materials by aerating uh, the materials and improving the um, the insulation properties. So there is um, more than use more uses for this um, kind of waste from the de inking process. But of course, the target is to really um, have um, a high content of paper fibers that are recycled and can be delivered to the paper mills as a clean and uh, pure raw material for producing of high quality papers. Yeah, the following overview shows us the experiences for different printing ink systems regarding their suitability for the, the inking process. In general, oil-based printing inks have proven to be suitable for the recycling of newspaper, books, and other graphic applications. Solvent-based inks, um, also those for magazines, newspapers, are used in or as used in the packaging materials can also be de inked very well. Same as uh, toner based office papers, for example, which have been classically or uh, traditionally always been um, yeah, supplied into a, a, a stream of recyclable materials. Listed on the right side, however, inks, ink types that can cause difficulties are listed um, difficulties for the de inking process. And here, um, in the case of radiation curing ink system, it is considered that the chem chemical cross-linking and the strong anchoring of the substrate makes uh, the inking more difficult. During uh, the defibering, quite coarse particles are formed, which also tend to not to float due to the hydrophilic character of the particles. This makes them more difficult to remove from the paper fiber pulp. So here there are general experiences in the industry that um, UV, LED or electron beam curable inks um, have sometimes difficulties. This does not mean this is in all um, cases um, true. And there are definitely uh, lots of um, yeah, encouragement to to really improve the recyclability of these inks. Water-based systems can create difficulties in, in some applications, especially when using soluble toners as well as by the discoloration of the paper fiber. Also, some offset ink systems based on vegetable oils um, have been partly seen as critical for the de-inking process at least in some literature. Yeah, decisive for the result of the inking, the inking process is the size of the dirt particles from the ink residues, as well as the area covered. And here it's, uh, yeah, we look at the number of dirt particles that should actually separate from the paper during the process. The flow chart shows the inking process with nowadays two flo floating steps, which um, then should lead to a quite uh, high detachment and um, removal of the slurry, um, of the ink particles from the slurry. Uh, by the way, there's um, beside the floating process, there's still in 
especially in North America, the washing uh, process, which is not considered as uh, energy efficient and not as um, yeah environmental friendly due to a high amount of water being used in the washing process. Therefore, in, uh, nowadays, the floating process is um, the most uh, applied, at least in Europe. And um, here it is also, um, there's further work ongoing to, to improve the, the recyclable rate, even with difficult to de-ink um, products. Uh, here you can see an overview of the evaluation we have done for the recyclability of printing inks, the, the inkability test according to the Ingede method number 11. This is an internationally recognized test for evaluating the, the inkability of printing inks. How does the test take place now? The paper sample is first aged um, under certain conditions to guarantee that uh, there are no, um, that the material is actually um, in the same or similar condition as uh, from the uh, collecting stations, uh, which where the paper is already on the way for a long time. Then this um, test material is pulped under specific temperature conditions, normally it's for 40 degree for uh, for a set period of time in an alkaline de-inking method. This consists of caustic soda, sodium silicate uh, peroxide, and um, a soap or oleic acid as a uh, detergent to uh, create uh, the bubbles and the foaming. Air is then introduced into the pulp so that the air bubbles carry the dirt particles upwards. And the ink residues can thus be removed from the protruding foam. This is the, uh, the floating process. Yeah. Eckert has commissioned several de inking tests according to this uh, Ingede method number 11. On the one hand, we use the metallized laminate for comparison only. We also tested printed substrates, substrates with one of our metallic UV offset ink, uh, just to mean uh, to, to have an idea uh, how and where we stand with uh, UV offset metallics. We also let test a solvent-based gravure ink based on a silver dollar paste. And we also had an aqueous ink system under evaluation based on a metallic a silver metallic ink from our Rotostar Aqua series. Yeah, and here on the left side, you can see the original substrate, a high gloss paper laminate uh, with PET film. So this is not metallic ink. Yeah? This is um, the reference material, a, a paper substrate with um, a laminate on PE, PET metallized. And this is uh, the base material for many high chrome effect applications as used in uh, liquor packaging, even tobacco and wherever. And these are usually overprinted with uh, CMYK, black inks, of course, and um, in, in a large amount also with opaque white to cover the areas which are not desired to appear um, metallic or with this high gloss and high mirror effect. In the middle image, you can see the enlargement of the dirt particles that remain on the paper fiber after the inking. So this material on the left side has been treated with the Ingede method number 11. And these are the residues uh, which can be seen. All these are yeah, microscopic particles which uh, due to the, the large number and large area occupied lead to an impairment of the brightness of the paper fiber. So we actually can see it by, by the eye um, that this is graying uh, the paper fiber. In the right picture, you can see it in a SEM magnification 
the, uh, the remaining particles which remain on the paper fiber. So these, all these spots uh, or these um, yeah, bulky materials between the fibers are actually aluminum particles from the metallization process. This type of contamination leads to a considerable impairment of the recycled materials and does not pass the Ingede test according to the test number 11. On the left side of this uh, picture here, you can see the metallic gravure ink, which we have been printed on a, on a cardboard material in our plant um, as a trial material for the deinking test. This was also uh, subjected to the method number 11. In the middle, you can see the direct comparison. Um, once again, the met uh, metallized PET substrate on the right side and on the left side, the, the inked material, the, the inked paper fiber with the review ink, which we have prepared. So as shown in the slide before, the dirt particles are much smaller and practicable, invisible to the eye. At high re resolution magnification on the right side, you can see the SEM picture. You can see that uh, compared to the paper fibers, um, the metallic ink particles are rather small. Yeah, this is one of the these particles which are somehow still sitting in between the fibers, which could not be removed and which you can see um, in the middle as the, the grayish appearance. But um, this is by far much, much smaller and uh, much less particles, which um, can be seen here. So this, uh, this identifies that uh, ratio of particle size and uh, um, amount lead uh, to a much better yeah, appearance of the metallic pigment, the inked material. On the left side here in this picture, the original substrate with a UV metallic ink for indirect food contact. You have to switch further. Sorry. Thank you. This is um, one of our UV inks uh, used for offset printing, um, Topstar UV FPG 721. Um, this is um, based on a micro mirror pigment called Metalure. And um, in the uh, so food packaging formulation um, has been developed specially for the production of uh, high quality food packaging. And in this case, the ink was overprinted with a yellow to create an antique gold effect. The carton was then overprinted with UV overprint varnish. This is a rather practical print build up for this ink. And uh, the engaged test result has a, showed a score of 97 out of 100 and passed the de-inking test. On the right of the picture is the original substrate with a solvent-based metallic ink based on the silver dollar aluminum paste silver shine AE 809. So this was act is actually the same um, ink as been shown before, just for a reference to compare it with the metallized board. The binder system here is an NC. The inking test was uh, also very positive. In this case, it passed with 100 out of 100 points in the scorecard of the Ingede test method. On the right side of this um, picture here, you, you see also the results of uh, Ingede test um, based on the solvent-based ink, sorry. Uh, we are in one ahead already. <laughs> Last not least, we also have an example of an aqueous acrylic based silver metallic ink, which also had no trouble with the Ingede test. Um, this is the Rotostar Aqua FP10 for 1001. 
Silver Ink. This also scored with 100% in the test scheme. Of course, these are all only examples of applications where metallic inks are meeting the, the inkability requirement. By the way, very good in this case. Yeah, but um, this shows already how uh, it can be made that um, you can meet all the um, requirements to pass the test. And um, yeah, there are lots of chemistries which are um, suitable for the, ink, the inking. Different substrates is, of course, area coverage and ink build up have a significant impact on the results. The results showing, however, here, it demonstrates that the metallic inks available on the market with different chemical compositions can be applied in such a way that contrast, in contrast to metal, metallized films, laminates, the, inkabil the inkability is given and thus uh, reusability of the papers and boards is not imp impaired. Yeah, um, yeah, to fairly evaluate metallic inks, we look at them in comparison to other technologies. The differences here can be seen in this um, in this overview structure. In the in the case of the printing ink, the ink is printed onto a carton board and yeah, sometimes in, in print jobs, there is a primer um, below the, the metallic ink layer. This is a very simple setup. With metallized board, the layer structure is more complex. Yeah. An adhesive is applied um, between the board and the metallization layer. And with the metallization layer is a primer between the foil. When using hot foil stamping, or yeah, the, the hot foil stamping is structure is we are similar complex as we as the metallized cardboard, except that um, this buildup is usually not 100 full surface um, used on a print job. So the the layers are the same but um, foil stamping is usually used only for highlighting effects on a printed item. Mm. Yeah, let us check the recyclability of the metallic effects. Um, which process is more sustainable? Yeah, the metallic ink is printed onto the carton board, sold to a consumer, and they collect the board and within the recycling process, um, the part of the ink can be resolved as yeah, shown by Torsten before. Um, and therefore the board can be recycled fully. The handling of the metallized board is quite different as the PET layer cannot be resolved from the board as shown um, from Torsten before the packaging is 100% yeah, waste. And when using foil stamping, the metallized film is used only for selected areas of the design, but the rest of the foil is waste. Those selected foils can be recycled and therefore the card and board can be recycled as well as using, you know, same as with the metallic ink. Questionable, however, is what happens to the carrier film of the foil effect, usually, the film material can only be used as an energy source for combustion. Yeah, this is an overview, very detailed overview about the characteristics of the typical metallic effects technologies. Um, let's highlight some parts. Yeah, normally the metallic effect is only used selectively as a highlight effect. This is printing on desired areas only. Metallic printing inks and hot foil stamping are suitable for this. The, metalis the metallized laminate substrate is always containing 100% PET film and needs overprinting with high opacity CMYK inks or um, opaque white, often enough with more, more than one layer. 
regarding speed. Metallic ink and metallized board is you know, quite equal in use. Foil stamping needs slower speeds. The inkability, yeah, we went through that already before. It's good to fare for metallic inks as well as for foil stamping. Regarding gloss, matte board and foil stamping gives high gloss effects, for sure. Can metallic inks compete here? Yeah, let's look more detailed into that variety of metallic effects and then um, prepare the following slide. The, um, the mirror-like effect inks yeah, are usually formulated by using vacuum metallized pigments, so-called high brilliant mirror effects, yeah, VMPs. In the Eckhart language, we call them metallure. The left picture here shows an SEM microscopy of a multiple metallization layer of such a pigment in our production facility. Compare this to other technologies where only one layer of metallization is given. Eckhart's metallure pigment is processed more efficiently and therefore more environmentally friendly. Yeah, metallized board and foil stamping show very high gloss effects. With metallic inks, it is um, yeah, shown advantage. You have an advantage if you have a closer look on the printing application. Which printing technique gives the best effect? Yeah, we try to give you an overview here. Um, we compare the different technologies and yeah, these are prints um, done on a paper or a surface print on a paper or a carton board. The solvent-based reviewer screen printing show the best effects, followed by solvent-based flexo and UV LED curing flexo printing. Also in offset UV LED printing, we can offer high gloss effects. Uh, Torsten showed this top star um, UV before. Each printing technology has its own metallic effect range. Our four pigment categories give four different gloss effects. Gloss is also dependent on substrate quality, the use of a primer, or the pigment quality as well as the pigment size. We offer high gloss effects for solvent, water-based, all based formulations, as well as for UV or LED curing inks. Metallics inks are sustainable. How can they match the high gloss effects of other technologies? Mirror effect like inks should be printed on to smooth surfaces to give a good orientation and a light reflection. Primers help on absorbing of rough surfaces as shown here. To improve gloss, so um, this is an amount um, of gloss which is enhancing here. It's a printed cardboard. Yeah. Yeah, the typical design on card and board packaging is roughly below 20%. We compare in this table the demand of plastic substrate and the metallic coverage rate. <laughs> this sounds a bit complex and it looks like <laughs> it's very complicated. But what does this mean? The blue line on top shows that with metallized board, the use of plastic on the packaging is always 100%. If the design has a typical amount of 20% metallic effect, the rest of the PET is covered with CMYK or opaque white often enough even with a double layer. The green line, line shows the amount of PET film used for the production of metallic inks based on vacuum metallized pigments, Eckhart's metallo pigments. These pigments were produced by using multiple layers and used therefore much, much less plastic film. Depending on the desired metallic surface, a significantly lower demand for PET film is required for the manufacturing process. And by the way, the PET film of the VMP metallure process is fully recyclable 
as it is a mono material and this can be sorted easily. Metallic inks are sustainable and have a lot of advantages. They print on selective areas. They offer a large color room from light to dark and a large effect room from smooth to mirror-like effects. Metallic inks are suitable for de-inking processes. We've learned today. Yeah, we're coming already to an end of this short presentation. As a summary, I would say, packaging, printing inks, and in particular, metallic inks are only a minor part of the printed products of the packaging. Um, metallic inks from Eckhart uh, are, have been tested and certified as uh, the inkable according to the Ingede method number 11. But further studies will certainly be made in order to uh, and, and conducted in order to to really uh, give uh, best possible advice to our customers which ink systems are um, fully de-inkable or not. This is, however, this decisive on the on the packaging material, on the design, the amount of inks, how much uh, is applied by which method, how, well, how it is cured, and so on. So all these tests which have been shown here and which were very positive are just uh, a clear sign and indication that the test that the ink systems based on metallics are no different than than other um, ink system of the same chemistry and can be certified in various application um, in order to meet the requirements of recyclability in the sense of sustainability i hope this has given you some ideas and um, some yeah uh, positive uh, yeah look at uh, the use of metallic inks uh, as a um, yeah sustainable alternative to other technologies which we know they are in the market and which are very well accepted also but uh, in in some uh, cases however are not uh, so environmental friendly and uh, of uh, causing a lot of uh, technological problems in the waste management and in the recyclability therefore here could